to have a look at part one of electric circuits, which forms part of the physics syllabus. So just an introduction to electric circuits. An electron is a negatively charged particle. We've learned about this in a number of other physics sections. So it's a negatively charged particle and a proton is a positively charged particle. So matter with excess electrons will have an overall negative charge. We know that from our other physics sections such as electric fields, etc. And matter with equal electrons and protons will be neutral. We know that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. So current electricity needs electrons. However, your electric flow in solution does not require electrons. So when you have a flow of current, current electricity through a circuit, you're going to have a flow of electrons. Therefore, you need electrons. However, if you look at a solution of ions, you will have a movement of current um, without the flow of electrons. And we measure our charge. So the unit that we measure charge in is coulombs. So when we look at conventional current, conventional current is the flow of positive charge. So electrons flow from negative to positive. We know from our other physics sections that electrons obviously repel by our negative and attract to our positive. And however, conventional currents, and you must be very careful because sometimes they may ask you about this. You must know your electrons flow in the opposite direction to conventional current. Conventional current flows from positive to negative. So in a series or parallel circuit, your conventional current will flow from your positive, your positive side of your battery or your power input to the negative side. That's just good to remember because often they will ask you about that. Then we look at the measurements of current. So current has a symbol I. So we represent current with a uh, capital I. And it is measured in amperes, which is a capital A, that is a symbol for amperes. Measured using an ammeter connected in series. So when we have a series circuit, we can use an ammeter because an ammeter has very low resistance. So it doesn't affect our circuit in any way. Now current, we need to know is the rate of flow of electric charge. So increased current means we have an increased rate of flow of electric charge and lower current would mean that our rate of flow is lower. So how does charge flow? Well, if we have two points that have different electric charge, so a positive and a negative terminal, they have potential difference between them. If the points are joined by an electric conductor such as a wire, then the charge will flow. Electric charge is accelerated by the electric field in the conductor. So if we have a positive and a negative terminal of a battery and we are connected those two terminals with a wire there's a potential difference and this causes the charge to flow so how do we measure potential difference potential difference is the energy required to move charge and potential difference has a symbol v which is a capital v and it is measured in volts a small v now we use a voltmeter which has to be connected in parallel. You cannot connect a voltmeter in series because it, the resistance through a voltmeter is too high. So we connect it in parallel in order to read our potential difference, but not affect our circuits. So let's look at the function of a cell. The cell is the energy supply to the circuit. So if we had a battery, um, this would be the cell. The cell maintains a potential difference. So I've, as I've said, the positive and the negative terminal will maintain a potential difference in the circuit and yeah, across the ends of the wire and hence the electric field in the conductor. So this causes the flow of charge through the conducting material. Energy in the cell. So energy is not created in the cell. We know from our conservation law that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So we know energy is not created in the cell. It is only transferred. And the electric field does work on the charge or the charges, the energy for the work comes from the source of EMF. So your source of EMF can be chemical energy from your cell, which is transferred to electric energy, or mechanical energy from a generator, which is electrical energy. Um, so obviously this would be your source of EMF in your circuit. Now we look at charge and current. So as you've said, um, current is measured in coulombs. So 
Our definition for Coulomb is one Coulomb is the amount of charge passing a cross section of a wire or conductor in one second when the current is one ampere. And current, as we've said, is the rate of flow of charge. So um, now let's look at the formula which will be provided on your formula sheet. We have Q, capital Q, which is our symbol for charge. Remember, it's measured in Coulombs. Equals I is your current measured in amperes times time measured in seconds. So this is how you would calculate your charge and your current. And they may even ask you to solve for your time. When dealing with this equation, always remember to keep your charge in coulombs. They may give it to you in nano, pico or milliculombs. Um, so you must always convert to coulombs um, in order to do your calculations. Current must always be in amperes and your time must always be in seconds. We look at potential difference. So this formula will also be on your formula sheet. Potential difference, as we've said, is the work done per unit positive charge. So potential difference is represented by the symbol capital V is equal to W, which is your work done. So in that's measured in joules over Q, which is your charge in coulombs. We can rearrange that to say that our work is equal to our potential difference times our charge. And remember, as with our other formula, when we do calculations using this formula, we must make sure that we are dealing in the right units. Our potential difference must be in volts. Our work must be in joules. And our charge must always be in coulombs. Um, often they will give you your, your values in different um, units. So always be sure to convert before you do your calculations.